Hey, on the Claudia Kitu Atuati, hey, Maori order. No, my Hari Mai Kitene, Fare, Karaki, Atena Koto, Tena Koto, Tena Tato Kotoa. Good morning, school. Welcome to chapel. Please have a seat and no hope. So, we're continuing with our messaging this week as we prepare for anti bullying week next week, particularly Pink Shirt Day on Friday next week. And today I want to share with you a story, use some words to assist with that story, but also to use some music as well, to tell a story that only came to light fairly recently, and that's the story of the Women's Orchestra of Auschwitz. Auschwitz, I hope you know, was a concentration camp where 1.5 million approximately people lost their lives during the Nazi extermination from 1940 to 45 in that horrible place. We're thinking about this group of women, particularly one of them who was in that particular orchestra, and something of that story, and how it connects and can connect with our lives and can shape and inform us as we go into the future. So let's go to our opening prayer. Sorry, the opening response is, the Lord be with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Kino Tato. Prayers that are sourced from the World Holocaust Memorial Day. Loving God, we come to you aware of our world, where so many are targeted because of their identity, culture, race, and religion. We recognize destructive prejudices that drive people to part. Forgive us when we give space to fear, negativity, and hatred of others simply because they are different from us. In your light, help us to see everyone as equally precious manifestations of your love and inspire us with the courage to face the darkness. Through our prayers and actions, Help us to stand together with those who are suffering so that light may banish all darkness and love will prevail over hate and good will triumph over evil. Amen. A2 for our opening Maita. Hey, Honore. Psalm 98, an ancient song from the Bible over 3,000 years old, celebrating the power of music. I will sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. 
All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth break forth into the joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with a lyre, with a lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fits it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for, for joy. At the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteous and the people with equity. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Mickey and Arjun. Words from a psalm written three centuries ago that speak, sorry, three millennia ago that speak about the transformative power of music. Today I want to talk about the Women's Orchestra of Auschwitz, particularly about one of their musicians. She was a cellist. So what was the Women's Orchestra of Auschwitz? Here's a little bit of their remarkable story. So the Second World War, 39 to 45, 1939 to 1945, was probably one of the most darkest periods of human history. What had begun 20 years earlier than that in a pub in southern Germany had reached its zenith of terror by the 1940s. Hitler's final solution started to exterminate the Jews of Europe plus others. Veterans of the First World War allowed their prejudice and their racism to scapegoat the Jewish people for their defeat. Prejudice and racism gave birth to a movement we now know as the National Socialist or the Nazi Party, which gave people permission to bully others and to discriminate against them. And of course their words became weapons and within a few years people were losing their livelihoods, their homes, their dignity and of course ultimately their lives. Words of prejudice, words of hatred, words of racism cost millions of innocent people their lives. Of course, some survived. Some survived because they escaped. Some survived because they were protected and hidden and cared for by others at great personal risk to themselves and their families. Some survived because they refused to give up and lose hope. Some survived because luck was on their side and they were more fortunate than others. And some survived because they were gifted musicians. We saw in that early clip the story of part of one of them. And here's another great hero of this time. This is Anita 
Lasker Wolfich. Now, it was Holocaust Memorial Day today. It was also the 69th anniversary of the liberation of the inmates of Auschwitz. Many of those who'd survived the Nazis' unspeakable brutalism have since succumbed to old age. But not so Anita Lasker Walfisch. She was a youthful member of the Auschwitz Orchestra in which she played the cello. So you might ask, what's all that got to do with us here in May 2023, 10,000 miles at least or so from where all these events occurred? But when racism and prejudice and hatred and bullying and the words that get used to support such things, when they go unchallenged, then they begin to take root. If we don't stand up to bullies, if we don't challenge people's behavior or the language they use, then we ultimately end up condoning it. It begins with us, it can end with us. We have a choice about how we respond. It's a very powerful picture. Notice the one who didn't join in the chant of High Hitler, sat there defiant with his arms folded. Martin Luther King, the great civil rights activist, said these words, it's not the words of our enemies that we will remember, but the silence of our friends. People who suffer from the actions of prejudice and racism, the bullying of others, often reflect that it was the bystanders who watched in silence that hurt them the most. The philosopher John Mill said in 1867, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil was for good people to do nothing. So there's the connection for us, the challenge for us to not be bystanders, to not be the silent friends of those who get bullied or persecuted or suffer the effects of prejudice in all its forms. Our call is to stand up, to stand alongside, and the greatest challenge of all, of course, will be to speak up. So back to Anita, the cellist from the orchestra of Auschwitz. The cello saved his life, and music will feed us all. So as we think about what we've heard in chapel this week from Mrs. Canton on Tuesday and the stories of today, as Matthew comes to play a particular piece, I encourage you to listen, ponder, reflect, and consider your responses to words of racism or hatred or persecution when you hear them. 
It's the beautiful piece of music called the swan. The swan represents symbolically peace and unity. Final words from Ali Weissel, a Holocaust survivor. What hurts the victim most is not the cruelty of the oppressor, but the silence of the bystander. Let us pray. Lord God of compassion, hear us as we pray for those who suffer today for the horrors of the past, for survivors of the Holocaust and other terrible stories whose memories continue to haunt and hurt. Lord God of healing, hear us as we pray for those who work for reconciliation and understanding, peace, respect, and tolerance. Guide organizations and people that foster friendship and heal hurts and bitter memories, that promote faithful encounter and honest dialogue. Lord God of truth, hear us as we pray for those who encourage dialogue and international peace, for those who pioneer new ways of thinking and understanding. We pray for those who encourage fresh visions of a world where we respect each other's diversity and celebrate the richness of each other's traditions, where we learn from one another and glimpse something of the mystery that is God. Lord God of pity and comfort, Hear us as we pray for those who are caught in the world's conflicts, innocent men, women, and children. Hear their cries, feel their pain and losses, see their desolation. We pray you will send us to the lost and afraid, the destitute and the dying, the lonely and the oppressed. Give us grace, give us energy, and give us vision of your love and empower us to do your will. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now have time for silent prayer and reflection.
As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we pray together in Te Reo. E tō mātou matoi te rangi, ki a tapu tōru ngoa, ki a tai mai tōru ranga teratanga, ki a mētia tau e pai ai, ki runga ki te whenua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi, hō mai ki a mātou ai nei, he taro mō mātou mō tēnei rā, mūrua o mātou hara, me mātou huki e mūru nei, I o te hunga e hara ana ki a mātou, o hoki mātou e kawe ki a whakawaiya. I ngari whakorangia mātou i te kino, nō hoki te rangatiratanga, te kaha, me te kororia, āke, āke, āke. Āmine. So, just to say thank you this morning to Mr Dunlop and to you Matthew for that phenomenal piece of music, The Swan, beautiful piece symbolising unity and, and peace amongst us. Take that thought, those messages, those stories, that music into next week as we think about um, bullying in all its many forms and continue with that and finish with Pink Shirt Day next Friday as well. So again, our thanks to you both for that. Service opportunities for next Friday, not tomorrow, but week tomorrow, May the 19th, supporting the Mental Health Foundation of New Zealand with our fundraising. There will be a pink shirt day, not a charity day, that comes later in June, but just um, the encouragement is to wear something pink and to also $5 minimum to support the work of those working in the mental health industry through the Mental Health Foundation. So that's next Friday, week Friday. Serve Saturday, 4.30 outside chapel. Rot keeps going. Well done, Year 11s. Fantastic response this year. Mission Council next week. And again, some pretty heavy themes, some powerful themes in chapel this week. Sometimes we need to address these, as well as all the things that are a bit more lighthearted. And if you are, if it is connecting with you in ways that are making you feel a little bit wobbly in any way, well, you know where to go. There is help, plenty of help. Huge help through your, the pastoral system, your housemasters, all the staff, but particularly our counsellors and myself. So let's bow our heads and pray God's blessing upon us as we depart this folly into this day. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Atamato, Atamato, Walu, Tapu, be upon you, those you love, those you care for, this day and all your days. Amen. We had a wonderful hymn practice yesterday, superbly led by Seamus and Caitlin. I think we've got it in us. I think we can sing this hymn, hymn and A, really well this morning. It's four verses of it. And to sell its context, it's a song based on the words that Mary, the mother of Jesus, spoke when she was greeted by one of her own relatives. They were both pregnant at the time. And Mary and Elizabeth, as she was known, when they, when they met each other for the first time in pregnancy, the story tells us that their babies leapt for joy in the womb. And Mary utters these words, which have been turned into this hymn, as a result, and it's a hymn which speaks of God's justice. Let's stand and sing, Tell Out My Soul.
can only improve, can't we? That's what it's all about, being better every day. Not a bad start, but we'll probably practice that again next Wednesday and give it another go on Thursday. Remember, there's some quick note changes in there. So let's pray together St. Paul's grace. Kyoto, kyoto katoa, teato fa o teato aliki a ihu kuraiti, me te araha o teato a, me te fifina taitanga, ki te waru tapu, ake, 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 amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. So let's go in the love of God, the peace of Christ, the dignity of the Holy Spirit. Kia kaha, kia hari, kia tapu. Be strong, be happy, be holy. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Dunlop.